Hi guys, Mathsman here, and I'm back with my latest video, which is all about line graphs. So, in year six, you should be able to do two things, which is to be able to construct, which means to make a line graph, and the other one is to be able to interpret them. Um, so, uh, first of all, what is a line graph? So, a line graph is a good way to show how something changes, and line graphs normally or should use two infinite pieces of data now so what is an infinite piece of data well here's one miles miles can go on forever i can have 15 miles 20 miles i can have a million miles they could go on forever same with kilometers they can go on for tens of millions of billions of of miles uh, kilometers sorry so here i have a line in the middle of my graph and what I have here is a conversion graph. It shows me how to convert miles to kilometers. Now, the line in the middle that you can see that's already drawn, that is going to help me to convert miles to kilometers. Now, when you're using a conversion graph especially, it is a good idea to use a ruler. And let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm just going to pick a different color for my line here. So I'm going to go for a blue. So if I wanted to know what 8 kilometers converted to miles was, I would draw a straight line from where 8 was until it intercepts the line that was in the middle of my, my line graph to begin with. Then I would, wherever it intercepts, I draw a line down to the other axis. And then it tells me exactly how many miles um, is the same as 8 kilometers. So 8 kilometers, I can see, is the same as 5 miles. So let's say if I wanted to find out what 16 kilometers were. 16 kilometers, I take a, a ruler. And then where the line intercepts, I draw a straight line down. And I can see that 16 kilometers is the same as 10 miles. Now, why should we use a ruler? Well, if we don't use a ruler, okay, to draw these lines, then this is what might happen. We, we might have an unsteady hand, and we could come down to the wrong point on the axis, and that could give us a incorrect or not as accurate answer. So if you're using a ruler, okay, you avoid all of those type of things. Here's another conversion graph, and this time it's changing Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. So this time I'm actually going to go from the bottom axis, and don't forget the bottom axis is also called the x-axis. So I'm going to try and find out what 20 Celsius in Fahrenheit is. So this time I'm going to do the opposite to what I did in the first, first part of the video. I'm going to draw a line up from 20 to where the line is and where it intercepts. Then I'm going to draw a right angle to the y-axis. Now, because where the line comes onto the y-axis, which is around here, because there is no, no number there, I'm left to interpret or, or f figure out the scale of, of what that could be. So I know that 50 is here and 100 is here, and where it meets the y-axis is there. So I know that my answer is going to be between 50 and, and 100, but by looking at this, I would say that my line is closer to 50 rather than 100. So I would guess here, well, if I, if I try and find a halfway mark, that might help me. So halfway between 100 and 50 would be about there, I would say. So that must be 75 because that's halfway between 50 and 100. So I would guess that 20 Celsius is the same as about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, now let's move on to actually constructing a line graph. The first thing that you need to do when constructing your line diagram 
is to take a look at the information that you have and figure out what the scale is going to be. So Nia measures the volume of rainwater in a bucket in her garden. Her results are in the table below. Draw a line graph to show the data. So I just want you to notice here, time, again, another infinite piece of data. So time can go on forever. And also volume can go on forever. So you could have something that's 240 milliliters or you could have something that is, you know, 200 million milliliters. It can go on forever. Now, I want to take a look at the data that I have. So the time starts at 9 and at 12, and each of the readings are in half an hour slots. So in total, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pieces of data there. And then for the volume, I, I start at 90, and I go all the way up to 240. So what I'm actually going to decide to do here, then, is I'm going to decide to have two squares okay and that's going to be for every half an hour so nine might be here and then this might be 9 30 so that's how i'm going to decide to do the time now for the volume i'm going to have this on my y-axis and i think what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go up 12 and have every square be 20 milliliters like that so once i've decided what the scale is going to be the next step would be to actually draw the axis themselves so i'm going to just do that now so i said i needed 12 to go up so i'm going to make the y-axis at least 12 and then for the x-axis i'm going to hopefully need about that much I'm just going to pause the video now whilst I complete the rest of the table. So I've now completed uh, filling in the, um, the sets of data on my y and x axis. Now the next step would be to actually label what these numbers mean. So on, on my y axis here, these are actually milliliters. And down here, I have time on the x axis. So now I've done those two things, I can actually start plotting my data. And just like with coordinates, I follow the rule along the corridor and up or down the stairs. So my first piece of data is 9 a.m. And I need to go up to 90. So here's 9 a.m. And I'm going to go all the way to 90. But I don't actually have a reading for 90 on the y-axis so I need to plot a point that is halfway between 100 and 80. So I've done that one. Moving on to my next one, 930 now and up to 100. I do have that on my y-axis so I can plot the point there. So I've done that one now. Then 10 o'clock and 120 mill milliliters. So that would be about here. 10.30 is 150, so find 10.30, so go along the corridor, and then up to 150. So again, there's not 150, but I do have 140, 160, so I'll go halfway in between. Now, one thing I would like to talk about when plotting points is I hope you've noticed that all of my crosses are on lines, or I've tried to be as accurate as I can and put them on lines. Now, I can't do this. I'm going to do the next example um, in a way you shouldn't do. So the 11 a.m. was 240. So I'm going to go up to 11 and then to 240. So what I should not be doing is this, okay? And I shouldn't be doing it here or here or here. I should be looking at the line. So what I'm actually doing is I'm imagining I'm imagining a, a direct line coming all the way up to the top and finding where the two lines meet. And that's where I'm putting my cross there. And then the final two are again 240 and 240. And then the final part of constructing a line graph is to then connect the crosses. And this is 
easily the most fun part of doing a line graph. But, as always, use a ruler, otherwise you will have a very unhappy teacher. So there I have constructed my line graph. Um, again, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it, if it is, then please um, give me a big thumbs up down below. And as always, if you'd like more free videos uh, for Key Stage 2 and Year 6 as in particular, then please hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching.